I welcome you to another series of our videos. So, in this video, we will continue discussing vectors. So, what are vectors? Vectors or a vector quantity is defined as a quantity that has both the magnitude and the direction. Then it is also important that we talk about the scalar quantity. A scalar quantity is defined as a quantity that has only the magnitude. It has no direction. So in this video, we have a question here that we will be looking at. So the question reads, the helicopter view in figure P1.1 uh, P1.70 shows that two people pulling shows two people pulling on a stubborn mule. So um, this this diagram we'll look at it in the next slide. So we have to find out um, we have to know what this uh, the the statement we've just read is uh, telling us. So they are saying a helicopter view, meaning this view or it's a, something like a picture was taken from uh, above of maybe they say somebody from in the helicopter above. So this view is showing that two people is showing two people pulling on a stab on a stubborn mule. So what is a, a stubborn mule? So here our keyword we have to know what a mule is. A, a mule is simply a breed or an offspring be, uh, between a donkey and a horse. So we can say that this is um, some form of a hybrid. So that's what a mule is. So we understand what a mule is. We can now go. Uh, we can. Uh, we can now go to. Um, the question so question a find the single force that is equivalent to the two forces shown b the force so this is uh, saying find the, fo the force a third person should have to exit on a mu to make the net force equal to zero so that is our um, second question then they've also given us to say the forces are measured in units of newtons. So let's look at this helicopter view. So this is the helicopter view. Then here this is a mu, which is the offspring of uh, a donkey and a horse. Then this is a person, person here. So in short, these are the two people. They talk about like they are pulling a stubborn mu. So, this person is pulling at a force, um, is exerting a force 60 degrees um, with respect to the positive x axis. Then, here is uh, this person is also exerting a force which is force 2 at 75 degrees with, um, with uh, respect to the negative x axis. So, like we've mentioned earlier, to say it is important or it is advisable for you to be using the positive x-axis as your reference point always whenever you're dealing with vectors. So, in this case, we can tell that this here, we can just subtract since here, the angle is 180. So, to find the angle just here, we can just subtract 100 and 80 by this so it will give us 110 so the angle here if we use the positive x-axis it will be 110 so it is advisable to be using the positive x-axis always as your reference point so um we can for easy solving of this uh this question at hand let's try to Take these forces as if it were just a single vector. So let's let's do it. So force one can be written in this form. 
so this is force one then it's being um, exited at the angle which is uh, this angle 60 degrees then the force one itself it's 120 newton so at this point let's find the x component of force one so the x component of force one is given by the formula f1 cos theta so x component of force one what is the f1 f1 we say it is 120 newtons then what is our theta our theta is the direction or the angle it's sikiste so it yeah we'll write cos sikiste so let's punch this on a calculator so when we punch that on a calculator we are getting 60 newton so this is the x component of force one then let's also look at the y component of force one so the y component of force one is given by f1 sine theta so what is our f1 our f1 we said it's 120 which is here then what is our theta our theta we said it's 60 which we have written there so f1 the y component of f1 when we punch on uh, let's try to punch this on a calculator so when we punch that on a calculator we are getting 103.923485 so uh, we can just write run it uh, we can just round it off to that but it is advisable to leave the answer in three significant figures so in this form we left the y component of f1 to be 104.0 newtons so let's also look at the components of force 2 so force 2 can be drawn or like in this form this is the y component then this is the x component so then this is the angle we talked of to say this angle it will be 105 because we've said we will be using the x component the positive x uh sorry we'll be using the positive x axis as our reference point always so if we use the positive x axis as our reference point then this becomes our theta here 105 if we are using this as the reference point would have said the theta is one uh, is um, 75 like uh, like what is mentioned in the uh, like what they've mentioned in the question so since we are using the positive x axis as our reference point then our theta our direction will be 105 degrees so and it is advisable to be using the positive x axis as your reference point so let's look at the x component of force 2 the x component of force 2 is given by force 2 cos theta so what is force 2 force 2 we said it's 80 then what is the direction or the theta the theta we said it's 105 degrees so this is 105 so let's try to punch this on a calculator 80 cos 105 giving us negative 20.7055261 so we can just write it in this form then now we go to finding the y component of vector of force 2 so the y component of force 2 is given by force 2 sine theta so what is our force 2 our force 2 it's 80 then what is our theta is 105 so when we punch this on a calculator let's see what we are getting when we punch that on a calculator 80 sine 105 it's giving us 77.2740661 so that's the the y component of force 2 so at this point since we've now resolved these um 
these vectors into their components we can now find the summation of these components so you get the like terms you add them together for example the x component of force one you add it with the x component of force two then the y component of force one you also add it with the y component of force two so this is done easily and to avoid errors by using a table format so let's see on how the table format is looking like so this is um, a table format then this is a vector here this column is for the vector then here it's for the component so the x component the y component so let's see force one force one has the x component sikiste and the y component 104 force two has the x component negative 20.71 and the y component 77.27 then now the resultant force has the x component 39.25 uh sorry 39.29 then the y component uh resultant or the the y component of the resultant force has 181.27 so all these are in newtons so you've seen that it is easy to write them in a table format and this makes us to avoid making mistakes when adding or subtracting so let's now look on how we can find the magnitude of this resultant force so first let's look at the the diagram representing the 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 resultant force so this is the diagram of the resultant force so we can tell that in the the summation of the x components and the summation of the y components both are positive so we can tell that the positive x component then the positive y component so these are in first quadrant so let's look at the um on how we can find the the magnitude of the resultant force so the magnitude of the resultant force of this vector is given by this formula square root of x squared plus y squared so these are components of the resultant force so let's substitute them so the x component of resultant force was 39.29 then we square it plus the y component of the resultant force was uh, 181.174 we will also square it so when you punch this on a calculator let's try to punch on a calculator we are getting the square root of 34,367.7 so um, when we find the the square root of this we get uh, the square root of this we get 185.38 as our resultant force magnitude so this we can write it in four significant figures to be 185.4 newtons so this becomes the magnitude of the resultant force so let's now look on how we can find the angle or the direction so the direction is uh, is given by tan inverse y over x so we substitute with the y uh, resultant uh, the y uh, y y component of resultant vector we will, it's uh, one, 181 so we we'll substitute it then the x component of the resultant vector it's 39 we'll substitute it here so when you we punch on a calculator let's try to punch we are getting this so also punching this on a calculator we will get our direction to be 77.8 degrees so this 
that's the direction of the resultant vector with respect to the positive x-axis because it um so this becomes the direction because it is that uh, the vector is in the first quadrant so this direction is 77.8 degrees with respect to the positive x-axis so we are done with question a now we look at question b so the uh, question b the answer is the third person would need to exit the amount so would need to exit the same amount of force as the resultant in a so the amount of force we found in a, uh, in a is the same amount that this person the third person would need to exit but this force should be in opposite direction so the amount of force a third person is required to exit is this here negative 185.4 newton so uh, this is an example of newton's third law of motion which says for every action there is an equal but opposite reaction so this is of the same magnitude as the force we found in a but is opposite in direction so for 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 the force uh this is the force needed to have uh this let, let me just quote the actual words so that's the actual force required on the mu um so the, that's the force a third person would have to exit to exit on the mu to make the net force equal to zero so uh that's the force we've just found negative 185.4 newtons so like i've mentioned earlier this is an example of newton's third law of motion as you go ahead you find you learn about newton's third law probably maybe you've already learned in high school about it so it was not a big deal so answers in summary resultant force that's a the resultant force is 185.4 newtons then the direction is 77.8 degrees above the positive x-axis or with respect to the positive x-axis then the solution for b it's negative 185.4 it's the same magnitude as in a but the only difference is the direction where we've put the negative so thank you for watching remember to subscribe